Hey, so what is going on, everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario. And Dope Spawner. And how are you doing today, Daniel? I am doing fantastic. How are you doing today, man? Uh, I'm doing quite well. You know, I'm just, I'm slightly tired, but I, other than that, I'm well rested. That doesn't make any type of sense, but I said it, so <laughs> screw it. That's going in the podcast. Well, if there is any uh, condolence towards you, I guess it is 930 your time right now, so it's a little bit later over there than it is here. Yeah, but I'm not an old man. This is true, but you did work today, right? Yeah, that's true. Exactly. Yeah. I did. I've done absolutely. Well, I've done minimal. Let's say. Okay, I had to. I had to sit on my butt for eight hours. That's what happened. Yeah, it really uh, burns you out. <laughs> yeah, honestly, sometimes it can because you're not. If, I mean, you have to like move around all. Because if you're not moving around, you're like, oh wow. Even though I haven't done that much physical work today, I'm so tired. So, yeah, I know. You, you get like kind of like lethargic feeling. Exactly. So life lesson to all you all out there: keep moving. Keep on moving. Exactly. Keep swimming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, this is Mod Chat episode. We're on episode 17 now because it is May and we've been doing this for 17 months straight. Big one seven. Yep. It's yeah. also the 17th of May. Spooky. Oh yeah, when we're recording this, I'm going to try and get it out tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to get it out tonight. Okay, no so, worries. Yeah. But anyways, today we are going to be talking about, uh, let's see, I kind of ran this by Daniel just kind of as a random type of thing, and we both agreed to it. So this is us talking about, you know, our thought process and everything when it comes to risking bricking hardware, destroying what we have and all that stuff, or completely destroying whatever software we have available when we are doing any type of modding project. So the way this has started off, if you're new to Mod Chat, thank you very much for tuning in. If you're not new to Mod Chat, thank you for returning. But essentially, this started off as a podcast that Daniel and I both made because we were both coming up through YouTube in the modding scene. Then when the modding scene kind of started, you know, drying up and everything with the transition from 7th generations of consoles to 8th generation, because we were primarily console modders and everything, uh, we decided to start doing this podcast just to talk about either current events or past things, anything like that, or just general type of stuff like this. Does that sound about right? I feel like you nailed it. Oh, well, thank you. So... When it comes down to it, uh, Daniel, I, I don't. I think you're, uh, you're you're knowledgeable with this as well too. But um, kind of risking getting a nice new shiny product and uh, breaking either out of the box or uh, slightly after getting it out of the box. Definitely guilty. Yeah. Um, when it well, when it comes to breaking though, like, are you are we referencing more like? a software brick or like or, or potentially damaging something during modding that makes it useless like are we talking about both um i would say yeah i would say we're talking about both because it would count for either or and you can throw in you know soft bricks hard bricks anything like that and we can define that for the viewers if they haven't listened to this okay then yeah i, I well i'm definitely i i've had my fair share of fuck ups if you will and mm -hmm. uh damaged hardware and you know, it's it's all good when you damage something and it's, you know, you can get it working again through some, you know, either updating or, um, you know, minimal hardware repair. But uh, there's definitely a lot of times where there is no going back, you know, there's no undo um, of any sort. And that's when, you know, things are extremely frustrating. And um, gosh, I'd say that's one of the worst things with modding is um when you especially if it's something stupid you know but obviously when you're doing uh when you're kind of treading uh uncharted waters you always run a risk of potentially damaging something i think we both you know know that going into whatever it is we're doing mm -hmm. and even though i would say you and i have high success rates with what we've done there's always that chance that there's going to be a failure just like you know normally if you update something stock for example uh like if you're going from windows 8.1 to windows 10 theoretically it shouldn't, you know, there shouldn't be any issues, but that's not, that doesn't mean that that's not going to happen. Uh, kind of like actually at work uh, today, we were kind of, uh, without getting into too much detail, there was somebody I was working with who uh, had a issue like that where they didn't upgrade and it wasn't working as intended. And I was talking with some other coworkers about it. And one of my coworkers just said straight up, he's like, well, there's a big difference between what should happen and what did happen. And that's essentially what happens when you are working with uh, modding or anything 
anything like that. Uh, I think one story I can get into is, uh, thankfully, I've never hard bricked a phone, and when we're talking about bricking, uh, normally the term for that is doing some type of software exploit or software modification, or doing something to the software that will render the hardware useless. So normally with a soft brick, that means that you're able to recover it with a built-in recovery, anything like that. A hard brick means you're done, you're toast, that's it. Uh, you turn it on, there's no recovery, you're accessing nothing like that. The only way you're going to recover that thing, if at all, is by modifying the hardware or really just getting into the hardware somehow, either, you know, like maybe using a programmer to solder onto that and then reprogramming it from there. Uh, what happened, though, was a few years ago when I was getting into rooting and everything, I helped my buddy root his Galaxy S3. And I remember there was one night he came over to my place, he wanted to update his ROM, and we did everything as normal. Like, I walked him through the steps, we made sure we had everything right, and even with this, it was shocking. Because even when I've soft bricked my phones, I've always been able to recover them somehow. But I remember his, when we flashed over everything, everything flashed over perfectly, and then when we went to restart the phone, it just went, like, dead as night black, and that thing was completely hard bricked. And that was something that neither of us thought would happen. Now, granted, we couldn't really blame like Samsung or anything like that because we're like, well, we were doing an unauthorized modification to the device. So we only had to blame ourselves. But it's like, damn it, how did we mess up? Because we did everything in the steps that you're supposed to. And we can't even access the recovery menu. Well, one thing that like is weird to me is that there are times when, again, you can do something like 100,000 times. But I've had like with xbox modding certain consoles that just don't like to be modded like you know they're just like trickier than others and like sometimes things will go wrong and be like what the f i've done this like a thousand times so i mean even if you followed it step by step you know i i don't know what made this phone different than any other phone or like what you know potentially could have been the exact reasoning but again like there's there's nothing like with modding it since it's not oem there's no, no guarantees with it you know i mean and like that's a risk that you definitely should know going into it is that you know there's no there's no guarantees from the developer that created the mod thing and i mean it's always at your own risk mm -hmm. yeah so i mean that 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 blows in that case scenario i mean phones are definitely not cheap and you know um not being able to recover it i'd, I'd be pretty frustrated regardless of whether it's you know no one else to blame but myself i definitely would be kind of you know, kicking myself for a little while on that one, I think. Mm -hmm. And even later on, because even for a while, he was scared to root his phone or anything like that, which I can understand. But I remember, like, Daniel, even the modifications I'd done before that, um, people are going to say I'm stupid, but tr hey, you know what? Live and learn. Um, I got my when I got my Nexus 4 right out of the box, I somehow managed to wipe the ROM on it. Uh, I was able to recover that. Uh, I also had another Samsung phone, last Samsung phone I ever owned. It was some weird variant of the Galaxy. And I remember with that, I was flashing over, like repeatedly, I was trying to like 10 times, I was flashing over a completely wrong model of firmware to it. And even with that, it was just soft bricking the phone. And that is why when it came down to that S3, I was like, well, it's probably just one of those instances, as you said, where the hardware is different because, you know, you think of these things as well too, as just, you know, pieces of machine and that's what they are. While as you know, humans are going to be different. But the funny thing is with that, we're not too you know misaligned because even with types of hardware yes every single xbox one let's say is going to have the same specifications every single nexus 6p is going to have the same specifications but each device at its core is going to be different somehow in terms of build whether it be the quality that was used or anything else that happened with that phone directly and therefore other things are going to happen so again we're kind of going back to the case where where it's not what should have happened it's what did happen happen yeah no that's a fact it sucks you know it really sucks because i mean you think that because like i remember i had i haven't had very many androids but i did have the original galaxy and i did um flash it and it, luckily everything went fine um but it sucks because the galaxy 3 i mean yeah it's, it's kind of older now in a sense but it's not that old in like the phone flashing game you know like it, you think that there would have been some kind of a fail safe or easy way because i like ultimately i think that one of the goals with modding is especially with the phone thing which i think you have more experience than i do is is that they typically like to make it where there is some kind of safety or fail safe you know at play to where you're not at risk of breaking which i know obviously user error like in your case if you're trying to flash over the wrong firmware like that could have totally gone extremely wrong instead of it you know just soft breaking and totally could have like butchered it but at the same time i think that 
a lot of the modding stuff of the phones are kind of sort of ish getting to the point where they are kind of dummy proof. Is that true in a sense or not really? Oh, absolutely. Like even with, um, I would say, cause you, you have an iPhone, right? Yeah. Oh, with those, I, uh, I have to commend Apple for this. Like they've done a really good job preventing, well, re do, you know, as best they can preventing somebody from writing over the wrong firmware or anything like that. Because, uh, I think I had a friend who he had gotten a iPod touch for free because somebody somehow managed to flash the wrong model firmware to that iPod Touch. And I sat there and I was like, how did they do that? Because I think I even tried that before and I could not successfully cause a failure with that. Oh, yeah, like it doesn't take the wrong firmware, exactly. right? Exactly. It like yelled at me and said, no, you are flashing this to the wrong model. Yeah. They, they definitely have made it like I, I made a YouTube video jailbreaking the uh, I think it was a 5S or something like that. And I hadn't jailbroken anything since probably iPhone 2 or hey maybe an iPod Touch. Yeah, the neighbor's dogs are <laughs> just awful. They're going to go crazy right now. Um, <laughs> but um, with the latest software that I used, it was stupidly simple. Like it was dumb simple. I mean, it was so automated that, you know, it didn't take any sort of knowledge of what you were doing. It was literally like, do this, do this, do this. There was like little picture animations to kind of guide you through it. It was dumb, like how easy it was. And again, if I were to choose the wrong file, it would say like wrong thing detected and it wouldn't let you proceed until you actually corrected it and put the right one. Mm -hmm. That was the uh, Pengu jailbreak, wasn't it? Yeah, that sounds great. Right. Okay, yep. Yeah. But with jailbreak specifically, as that's the one thing when it comes to like Android versus iOS. Like Android, if you're rooting it and all that, even I myself, I have quite an easy phone to root. I have a Nexus Six, uh, and with those phones, they're super easy to root. But even with that, they're harder to. Um, it's harder to root a Nexus phone than it is to jailbreak any of the iPhones because with most of those jailbreaks, it's pretty much a one-click solution, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, no, they've definitely made it really simple for iPhone, which is. Which is awesome. Again, mm -hmm. like I, I, I used to be all about it. Like that was one of the, the first things. Like I guess one of my first walks with uh, any kind of modifications was with phones. I think we might have touched on this in another episode, but um, I, I kind of don't have nearly as much interest or enjoyment of as I used to. But I mean, I used to really enjoy modifying. I, I think with Androids, it might be a little bit. Because I feel like their their custom firmware or ROMs is like a little more intricate than what you can do with a Joe. Or is it? I don't know. No, true. they oh they they go absolutely crazy with it. And even I myself now, I don't go all out with retheming or putting a whole bunch of different ROMs on my phone. I just essentially root it and then change it just a little bit to my liking, and then I'm done, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, which is smart because that's when things go wrong is when you start tweaking too many different things. Mm-hmm. Because. I, I've experienced that myself with when I was messing with my iPhone jailbreak a long time ago, like when I was going crazy with it, I wasn't just like doing a bunch of little things. I was doing like actual like internal tweaks and stuff like that. And that damaged it, you know, in the end. Do you remember like, uh, was it restarting the springboard a bunch? Oh my God. That was the most annoying <laughs> thing. Dude. Find, 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 yeah. Find, finding a, uh, what, what was it called? Snow? No. Um, What's it called? That whole custom dash thing. It's like springboard uh, or snowboard. Some I don't remember what it was called. I I have it on my old iPod Touch somewhere that I need to charge. Yeah, well, pretty much every single firmware like would eventually like need to restart or you know whatever respring. And I'm like, oh, this is so annoying. Just give me one that works. I mean, I'm sure it's come a long way since then, and there's a lot more stable versions. Because again, this is we're talking just like OG iPod Touch, and uh, but but at the same time, it was just like, oh my god, you know. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit annoying. It was cool. It looked nice. Don't get me wrong. Having all the custom buttons and just little animations and stuff like that. But it definitely, I don't know. It to me it was more of a headache than 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 worth. Mm -hmm. it, last thing on that. Do you remember DFU mode? Getting into that. How much of a pain that was like the first time. Definitely holding down the certain <laughs> like wasn't like holding down like the home and the power button. And yeah, then, you have uh, to do them for certain seconds at a time because that was a thing with it. Because just like how like Android, for example, it always has the recovery menu on iOS. You don't have a recovery menu, but you have DFU mode, and it's kind of like, well, if you can't get into DFU mode, you're kind of fucked. Yeah, I, I do remember actually struggling a few times. Like I'd have to do it like ten times before it actually took, and I'm like, oh my god, thank you. Like, I I did so <laughs> many jailbreaks, I became a master at that. Like you could just hand me a phone, and it's just like, okay, th thirty seconds later, there it's in DFU. <laughs> you call you King Defu. <laughs> <laughs> King Defu. That's King that's Defu. Neat. Interesting. <laughs> that's a good name, dude. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Now, do you, uh, s since I've told my story, do you have a story to tell in regards to uh, any type of device that you've had to mess around with like that? 
Well, I mean, the only thing off the top of my head I can think of, like, I mean, I've got, I've had quite a few things that I've screwed up and broken. Um, but the one particular thing was, um, I told you this not too long ago, but I at one point acquired a uh, Zephyr test kit, Xbox 360. And um, I was so excited. Like, I mean, I was in the prime of my, my Xbox nerdism and uh, was just so ecstatic to have this jewel in my collection. And I remember... Um, like I got it all cleaned up and I was kind of, you know, messing around with it. But at the time there was basically a, um, either a recovery or an executable or something like that, that would completely brick your test kit or not test kit. I'm sorry, dev kit or any, any kind of kit essentially. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I was so nervous to like try out anything or test out anything and Luckily, like, I mean, I ended up selling the kit and luckily, you know, nothing happened to it when it was in my possession, but that's only because I didn't really like do anything with it. I was so scared because like right around that time was the time when it was a big deal. It wasn't like, oh yeah, that that's, you know, old news. It had like literally just been spreading like wildfire and people were getting their shit all messed up. So, um, again, that didn't happen to me, but it was, it was terrifying. The thought that like my baby could be hurt, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm like, holy shit. Like this is. This is, you know, a kind of pricey item that, you know, I, I feel very lucky to have got my hands on. I don't want to fuck it up doing something stupid or, you know, taking a file from someone who I think I can trust. And then it ends up basically giving me a very nice looking but paperweight nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Now, with that, do you kind of regret that because of that fear you really didn't do much with your test kit? Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I'm, I'm ultimately I'm hoping that I don't remember even who got it um, at this point, but I'm hoping that whoever got it you know, took good care of it or had a cool use for it. Cause I know that it was an older guy that had, uh, had a lot of other really neat stuff in his collection. And, and honestly, there, there wasn't much I could do with it. Like uh, in terms of like things I wanted to do with it. Cause I ultimately wanted to some way, shape or form contribute back to the scene. And I always wanted to kind of create some kind of an app or something like that, but I just didn't have the knowledge. I knew that. And at the time it just didn't make sense at the time again now a different story probably but it just didn't make sense to hold on to it for no reason and collect dust basically it was what my thinking was on it i understand you know you know uh, i'll say to that as well too that story that you told with the because i know what you're talking about there was at least there, there was at least one recovery there might have been two recoveries that got out that essentially if you flash them over to your dev kit test kit whatever you had it would brick it permanently uh that's still you know um there, there's still waves of that in the scene and the reason why i say that is from what i know it hasn't happened in years but even when i talk to a few other friends that have uh dev kits and all that they even say they're just like don't download recoveries from random people on the internet. And I ask why they're like, because there are certain people on the internet that make recovery files and modify them and they will brick your dev kits on purpose. And I'm like, damn that. I mean, I don't doubt it, but it's like that happened like five, six years ago, some like that. And people still reference that. Such a dick dude. Or such like a, a dick move though. Like just to even be created in the first place. Exactly. So yeah, it's kind of one of those things. It's like, it, it's almost, it goes in a circle. It's like, okay, one, don't leak recoveries. Two, don't download anonymous recoveries. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Don't get me wrong. It, it truly does, but it just sucks. Cause like in my mind, I like to think that everyone in the scene is like trying to help better the scene and make it grow. But then you've just got like, I, I, I don't know, dude, I'd probably call them trolls. Like what else would you call them? Of course. Yeah, they're just fucking trolls, dude. And like, uh, granted, there was like a decent amount. I talked about this as total sidetrack, so I won't get into it much. But there was that like website dedicated to dev kit stuff that is no longer around. But a lot of the people on there were like really young kids with dev kits that were just trying to do like what I would consider quote unquote dumb stuff with them. And um, so I can understand that aspect of it. But at the same time, it's like, it would have been really cool if instead of that, like they had started some kind of like a way where people were contributing more so about you know working towards some kind of end goal or project and i've talked about this before like it's just me living in fantasy land i guess it's just not the way it is but i just wish that could be the case versus you know again you're trying to update your kit for whatever reasoning to you know get i guess newer uh you know dash and whatnot and then it's fucked <laughs> mm -hmm. so that's just shitty dude but yeah what about you? We'll trade off. What, what do you got next on that? Uh... Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, my God. Probably one of the things that uh, 
Oh, this, uh, I remember this was terrifying when I was younger because uh, you gotta, we got to go back in time, right? I was like 12 at the time, and uh, I had 12 or 13, and I had soft modded my original Xbox. Now, because of that, for a while, I was actually, I was not a hardware guy. I had not taken apart a computer. I had not taken apart game systems. I was strictly only software. Uh, now, because of that, I felt like that was my own limitation that I imposed on myself, and I felt like I couldn't do anything else, so I'm happy I broke out of that. But unfortunately, that also meant that I knew if I ever hard-bricked something, I couldn't fix it. I didn't have any friends that could fix it. I like This is before like I knew Craigslist was really a thing, or uh, I knew anybody else that was doing the hardware type stuff, and I didn't trust other people with my hardware, so I didn't want to send it off. And Also, you know, because I'm 12, 13 at the time, I didn't have any type of money coming in aside from occasional allowance and birthday and Christmas, so I didn't have you know the disposal funds to just go out and get another used Xbox system and swap out all the stuff. Uh, but I remember when I had... Uh, I had been able to obtain Splinter Cell and the action replay and everything to soft mod the original Xbox. Now, Daniel, have you ever done that or not? Yeah, I actually did it not too long ago. It's it, it's a fun process, isn't it? It is pretty fun. I will say that um, getting, I never got into this on my channel, but the two Xboxes I got pretty much both had fucked disk drives. That didn't make it fun. Uh, there is a way that you can fix that up, uh, not with the disk drives themselves, but, uh, if you have a old computer with IDE that you have access to, you could, you can take the hard drive out directly and flash it over. Uh, not even with that directly. It's where you have to like turn on the Xbox and get to a point where it is unlocked and you have to switch IDE cables with your computer and then use a Linux disk to get into it. Gotcha. Yeah, I looked, I looked at that, all the, like the options and stuff. I don't have any IDE. Like I, I probably, I think you can probably do like a SATA 2 IDE of some sort. I think you could. Um, I personally haven't tried it. I, uh, I I had the benefit of uh, working at a place at the time that we had just a spare a bunch of spare old IDE computers that no one was using. So I took an Xbox into there one time and loaded up that Linux disk and was able to soft mod it. Uh, but yeah, no, I would say if you're able to find a old IDE PC either on the side of the road or like on Craigslist for 10 bucks that no one wants. Yeah, I, I might end up having to do that, man. I, I mean, I have an older computer that's like my mod PC running XP. And it's like probably a... Uh, 04, 05 or something like that, but yeah, it still doesn't have IDE, sadly. That's actually impressive. Yeah. You huh. know what? It's it's it, Yeah, it's it's probably 04, 05, because it is it's running XP. It had XP like by default on it, so it's definitely not a new PC. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I anyways, I, I, I got it. Um I have I have a computer that I mean a, an Xbox that is modified, but I've had issues with a few things on it due to the disk drive being fucked up like it makes it more complicated to do certain things yes it does yes it does <laughs> which is annoying so like i'm, I'm kind of just put it off on the back burner for now and i'm waiting to um they're so pretty common at the swap meet so uh, i'll probably just find one for like I'll, 10 bucks does... i'll ask you this real quick are both of your xbox uh drives messed up yeah Oh, okay, because I was going to say either, well, you could fix one of them and swap them between or just fix both of them because there's actually no DVD key that's really needed to marry to the board, so you can just swap out drives. Yeah, I was looking online at even just, like, purchasing an Xbox drive, but I haven't even, I haven't seen much, like, stuff but, from China or, like, aftermarket. Mm -hmm. But at that point... Drive. At that point, honestly, it's not even worth it when you could just take a chance and buy another original Xbox for, like, 10 bucks or buy a drive for 20 yeah, exactly. So that, that that was my thinking with it too. I, I'd kind of already gone around and around about it, and they're actually still open under my bed. So when I'm making the move here in the next week or so, I'll have to figure out what I'm gonna do. But I'll get it eventually, man. And I was I was bummed out too because I had bought in a uh, a uh, what you called a uh, ghost case, you know, for it. And in my mind, I hadn't looked at it. I thought the ghost case completely replaced everything, but it doesn't replace the bottom plastic slash the back, and the back's fucked up on both of them, too. So I'm just, like, kind of like, eh, I don't even know if I want to invest my time in these Xboxes. Dude, lots of duct tape. I don't, dude, I don't want that. <laughs> lots and lots of duct my, tape. My, my goal is to make one that's, like, really pretty and, you know, it looks nice in the end. Because I even bought, like, a, uh, it's not huge, but I think it was, like, a 400 gig hard drive, like, you say a hard drive to throw in there. That's one of the issues I was having too, dude, was getting the hard drive to unlock and lock again because I don't have a disk drive. There's like a, a certain, I tried using Chimp and it was able to like read it and stuff like that, but it wouldn't lock it after. So I found another method, but it wouldn't, it, dude, I don't even want to get into it. It's just making my head spin right now. <laughs> yeah. It was hey, hey, that's you know, that's a whole other thing we can get into if we need to as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Even with just that. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I will say with that, you don't even need, as long as you have a disk drive hooked up, you should be able to boot up the Xbox and everything. And if you have access to an old computer, uh, you have to get the timing down just right. But if you're able to swap IDE cables and everything, uh, you should be able to get the hard drive unlocked and reading on your PC. And then you can use a Linux disk to just go into the, uh, the drive and install all the soft mod files. Yeah, I might have to give it another go. Mm -hmm. uh, just once I've got a little more space, I didn't even tell you about that, but the place I'm moving into, my room's 50% to 100% bigger, so I can't fucking wait, dude. Oh, nice! Yeah, it's going to be game changer. I'm going to have a like, dedicated spot for you know recording and stuff, so it, it'll be dope. Like you, you, Everyone will see, but I, I'm very looking forward to that because my room is just, it's like the size of a fucking shoebox, man. Mm -hmm. no, I so, gotcha. I, getting sidetracked back to your story yeah. you 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 had your you didn't want to uh the hardware okay you, yeah. you didn't hey, want so, to... some people complain about us getting sidetracked damn it that was interesting yeah i'm sorry guys <laughs> yeah. I, blame me, cause I would say most of the time it is my brain that just kind of like <laughs> just here's a no. sharp left turn and the, the road, thing is you know? i'm like that as well too but when i'm in the podcast because i'm aware of the time i'm like hey 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 let's let, let's steer it over but i'm sorry i was interested in that <laughs> no worries thank yeah. you for that and okay your story let's do it yeah so what was happening was as i said so when i got the uh system originally modded up and everything i remember i was so proud but then uh i fucked up like backing up the original ms dashboard so i couldn't access the original ms dashboard but i had the unleash x and then i was kind of sour about it because i'm like eh, well i still kind of wanted to access the original dashboard you know, just, just for, you know, completionist's sake, and also have the modified dashboard, and then it wasn't that cool, because there was a lot of stuff I couldn't do, like, I didn't have a good networking setup at my parents' house when I was that young, uh, so at the time, like, I didn't have a way of hooking it up to my PC properly, didn't know about any of the networking stuff I do now, I wasn't able to do that till later on, even later on, when I was able to get it onto my local network, uh, everything was quite slow, because I was using a wireless dongle to do all of that, and have everything transfer over, um, but then what ended up happening was I remember there was one night essentially where I had tried to mess around with some of the files and the Xbox ended up freezing, turned off, turned it back on, got some type of error code and got flashing orange and red lights or I think just a flashing red light. And I remember my heart just sank because like that, that, that original Xbox, I still got it at my parents' house. I actually need to ask them to bring it up. But that was my first Xbox I ever owned. And that was my first console I ever owned. And then it was just sitting in front of me blinking red at me so i think what i did to recover that i ended up because i had all the files still on there but i had to pop in my splinter cell again and i just thought of this fix i didn't look it up but i was just doing trial and error i popped in my splinter cell reran all the soft mod files and then that fixed up the unleash x and then after that i was afraid of touching it and now it's at the point where you know recently i had modded a few xboxes and one of them busted so i was able to get back into that and you know do everything on there uh but no it got to the point where because of that i was just so terrified of touching anything on that system and especially since it's not tsop there's no mod chip it's only a soft mod if the hard drive breaks down on it or anything like that it's a bit foobard at least for the time being until i actually do some more hardware modifications to it gosh well at least you're able to fix it dude that's like that's true you know what i'm saying yeah at least it wasn't a paperweight in the end man yeah yeah I, i've done that with it enough systems i'm looking at a few systems i have on my shelf right now that i was uh, doing surgery on and they are now dead yeah, I've I've uh, I've definitely done that with quite a few, dude. That PS2 that I tried installing the mod chip into, um, well, it never booted. <laughs> it never booted, and then something shorted on it, man. Which is like it happens way too much with the shit I work on. It because I get like kind of like okay, like it's, let's see if it works, but then I don't put it back and like it's safe shell, so I have it like exposed with like the metal shielding, and that that's what like obviously fucks it up. So. I would say that at least 50%, if not more, of my mistakes are just like me being stupid and rushing, you know, because I get like really, I get kind of like, uh, like a, not a high, but like an adrenaline rush when I'm doing a new mod and I want to see if it works. I, I don't know if you can relate to that at all. Oh, no, I absolutely relate. I'm like, oh, I want to get this done. I want to get this done. Let's see if it works. Yeah, exactly. I'm kind of like over here, just like hype, 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 like, all right, let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. And so, you know, that was one. And then the GameCube that I, I modded on live stream, that. I don't know whether it ever works or not. The LEDs were fine, but I couldn't get the discs to read. And then I ended up actually scrapping that console because of the fact that 
it had been full of the roaches at one point, dude. I didn't want to. <laughs> I just didn't want to fuck with it, man. I was like, this is a dirty, dirty console. And so I went up to I went up to my parents' cabin and found another GameCube that I had brought up there a long time ago that's in like really good condition. So hopefully, um, in the next few weeks here, I'll, I don't think I even have that module anymore. I think I let it go to waste with that console, but I can pick up one more and uh, hopefully do another live stream. And this time, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we will successfully be able to do it because it's really not that hard of a chip, dude. Like I know oh, you, not you, at all. No, it's it's pretty simple. It's like it's like what like five or six points maybe or something. Five or six points. I actually I, I just installed my second one and even I screwed up on that one. I I had a bunch of the solder clump together because I was kind I was kinda like you, I got a little bit excited and I wanted to finish uh -huh. it. And then uh -huh. it's clumped together, so I spent about ten to fifteen minutes cleaning it all up and then I had the points all nice and clean on there. Uh, but I spent a good amount of time on there because I also had to pot tweak it. My my own personal GameCube, I need to, but it worked fine without it. Uh, but this GameCube is actually for a friend that I'm giving it to uh, as a present. And that one, it wouldn't read any of my backups properly until I tweaked the laser enough for it to work. Did you use a multimeter to set it or you just did it little by little? Uh, I just did it little by little. I don't I don't recommend that to people if you're going to do it properly, use a multimeter. But I just like took it a little bit until the game started working. Okay, because I mean the thing is, when it comes to like the 360, I used to tweak the pot on the disk drives all the time, and I never once used a multimeter. Like this was back before. I we was don't recommend like... this. We do not recommend this for it. That's not best practice. No, definitely not. I'm just saying, like <laughs> before, I didn't even own a multimeter. Like this was back when you know I was just a kid working at McDonald's, like trying to mess with the Xboxes, and now, like I mean, um, for example, I've been using potentiometers a lot more. Uh, for example, all of the stepper motors on a a 3d printer they usually have little driver boards with individual potentiometers and so you want to adjust them to where the the uh, motors get enough uh power but not too much power to where they overheat and not too little power so that they like skip steps but um in that case scenario i actually have been using a multimeter usually um to you know get it to more of a uh accurate pr quote unquote professional you know results in a sense mm -hmm. yeah no what what i did essentially with this one was because i've rarely done pot tweaks but with this one uh the first time i tweaked it uh because when when i didn't tweak it uh my burned games that i was testing on it uh none of them worked properly um there was like one that booted and it barely worked uh out of all the ones i tried uh then when i tweaked it the first time it was working, but no, I think I tweaked it three times because I think the, f no, twice, no, because the first time I tweaked it, the games were working, but some of them still had issues, and then the second time I tweaked it just a little bit more, and then once that happened, the games were working, and I tried also like moving the GameCube while it was playing and all that, and yeah. everything seemed to be fine. Okay. Yeah, so essentially you just need to get it to a point where you move it just... If you don't have a multimeter, again, not best practice, but move it just enough to the point where it is just now working. And then just test it and make sure it's all running. Because the first time I tweaked it, my game's running, but there were some of them that would just randomly stop. Or, like, one of them, the reason why I ended up changing it was because uh, there was one game I was playing, and when I just, like, tapped the GameCube, the whole thing stopped working. Hmm. Yeah. My... W w my biggest thing and like one of the it's like it's kind of a side thing but when it comes to modding and stuff like i know that me and you like we 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 have our skill set like you know we're we're definitely very i'd say computer savvy people we understand software and we we're getting more familiar with hardware you know as we go on with you know our different projects and stuff like that but um there's certain things that i wish i understood more in terms of like electrical law and things like that because like i i feel like i i don't know what would be the correct you know, um, ohm resistance to have on the potentiometer for the GameCube. Like, the only way I'd know is by Googling what other people did or, like, Googling, you know, so... Do you do you know or no? Because I no, sure I, I really don't, man. And I actually I have a um a let's repair episode coming up probably next month where I had worked on a PlayStation that did not have any video output, and there was a resistor and a di diode. I want to say I I there were two things. Um, one of them was a resistor and one of them was something else. A capacitor that was it. A resistor and capacitor that I had to buy and solder. And I remember they didn't have the exact ones that I needed, so I went to a local shop here and there was an old guy there who uh, he was just kind of sitting there chilling I think waiting for his wife or something but he was asking me what I was doing I was talking with him and he just gave me a quick crash course on what I would need for like ohms and resistance
and everything. So I ended up using some things that were, because I use like, the, you know, the lowest things that they had, um, but they weren't what was required in the guide. But in the end, it all worked. And because of him, you know, at first I wouldn't have tried it. But when I talked with him, I was like, okay, well, you know what? This should work. It might be a little bit too dark, but it would be fine. And this theoretically should work right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's awesome. It's that's, more see, that, that's... I learned from crash courses more or less, which might not be the best, but hey, science was never my strong suit. No, me me too, definitely. And like my thing is too is I've talked about this before, and I, I, just really quick, and I will get back. But like you know, I've I've been wanting to um, get to the point with like basic CAD software and my electronics where I can make portables. Like I really want to make an N sixty four portable. Like that's something that's like up there on terms of like big projects I want to do, but the same time as much as like you know i can learn to design something i don't know like there's there's things that like are basically going to take a lot of googling and forums and asking people with more knowledge but i love to get to the point where it's like yeah i know what i need to do here's my plans like you you know it just the more you know this stuff like the easier everything is really i mean you want to be someone like ben heck with that stuff where he just That's like yeah. yeah yeah i mean he he is a mad scientist with that it's amazing he, I, I absolutely love him. His jokes are terrible, you know, but, but I can appreciate. I mean, at he the has same time. he has dad jokes and dad humor. That's what you expect from Ben Heck. It, it, exactly, exactly, and it, it just works for him, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely very uh, jealous of his knowledge, and I, I'm like fascinated by the way he just goes about, you know, his little projects and creating things. If you guys haven't heard of or checked out Ben Heck, dear God, like. Go yeah. check out Ben Heck. Ben Heck is pretty much like – he's like the stereotypical person you would think of where it's like your dad has that friend who knows how to do everything related to electronics. That is Ben Heck. He's like super geek, man. Yeah, he is. He's awesome. Yeah, he's he's, he's cool as shit. He really is. Yeah, um, now, if we ever meet him, we're going to feel so stupid. I'm just saying that. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I'd, be, I'd be the guy sitting there just like, uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know uh -huh. what some of these words mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just, it's like, it's like, like you see in the movies where like you're at a fancy dinner and like someone's like trying to act like they know what the hell the other person's talking about, but like kind of like get caught with their words and like just make a fool of themselves because the other person <laughs> catches on and they're not knowing what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. It's pretty great. Yep. All that great stuff. Hey, you, you want to wrap it up with one more story on your end? Um, let me, give me, you, you, you go on on something for a minute here. Let me think about what I got. Killer bees. Killer bees. Killer bees. <laughs> Not just a joke. Yeah, no. Well, I, I've got one. Okay. Okay. I've got there, one. That jogged so, your memory. Yeah. So killer bees. No, um, there actually was a JTAG they had back, back when RGHs weren't a thing, back when RGHs weren't a thing, back in the good old days. And, uh, where you had no I idea what the hell, like nobody knew what the hell they were doing with these JTAGs. Exactly. When nobody had any clue what the hell they were doing, I had a JTAG and I don't know what the hell I was doing. Um, I, I think I was trying to update the dash. I am pretty sure that is what I was doing. And I think what happened was, um oh god i think that i tried updating the dash directly from the console um via like xcx flash or whatever the hell it was called nan flash I, I don't remember exactly what it was back then but it's just something that lets you do it you don't need a software from the computer um you just copy over the uh nan and it's supposed to flash it and so i was messing with that and then i remember i I think I popped in a game, dude, that was like one dash higher than than my JTAG, and it asked me to update it. And I think I clicked yes. I don't know why the fuck I did that, but I did, and it updated. <laughs> and my Xbox reset like midway through the update, and I had like an E E error. I, I don't remember what E error it was. <laughs> But I had an E error and I instantly like shit myself and was like, oh my God, what have I done? Because again, like back then, granted, I did have another like one or two JTAGs, but they were still like really valuable and they were like more of like a, a prized possession versus like now it's like, oh, cool, you got a JTAG, you know? Of course. Um, and so <laughs> I remember freaking out, freaking out, freaking out. And luckily, 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 I had saved my original like NAND um pre like my pre-flashed nand on my computer like you're supposed to you're supposed to have a backup copy of your nand and cpu key and i did have that and so in the end what i ended up doing was i flashed over and it was just a stock console so at least it wasn't completely fucked 
But at the same time, that could have easily been a bricked console. If, if, if you know, again, because they basically blew the E-fuse. I didn't remove the, um, what, what, what was it? You could remove. Um, there was a capacitor was that, that you could remove so it wouldn't blow E-fuses. I never did yeah. it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I never did that either. I didn't take any of those, like, you know, safety steps, I guess. But at least at the same time, I was able to kind of, like, get myself out of the hole I had dug myself into. But it, it, it fucking sucked. And so, basically, like, if there's any moral to the story, one, don't be stupid. But two, if there are things you can do to, like, prevent stupid shit from happening, just probably do them, you know? <laughs> like, probably do them. Like, I know that a lot of people didn't remove that resistor or whatever, but... I didn't. Uh, I never have. But, I, I honestly didn't either, dude. But at the same time, I did my best to at least, um, like, if I were to, if I were to JTAG a console, I'd usually burn a disc and keep it with it that had the NAND and the CPU key. That way, because again, on the computer, sure, it's like one thing to keep things, but you can still lose shit. So I actually keep like a physical copy of it in case shit were to hit the fan. At least I can somehow hopefully bounce back and not just have a paperweight out of the Xbox. Oh yeah, I always did that as well. Yeah, so that's just something that like. You know, you should be doing, but I guarantee you that not everybody's done that. They probably just, you know, some people keep on a file on their computer and then, you know, something goes wrong a year later. Like, fuck, where's that file? You know, I could totally see that happening. It's got to have happened. Dude, I know a lot of people that did that on Mega Upload. Oh, God, when Mega Upload went down? Yeah, I know a lot of people who service systems and they store their customers like DVD keys, CPU keys, NANDs and all that on Mega Upload. And then it got seized. That's awful. Yeah. And nobody has any of those files back. Oh my god, <laughs> oh, that's awful. Yep, yeah. I, I I will say kind of all that because when you were saying that, I had um thought of this as well. A uh, qu- quick story on here, buddy of mine. He does not. Uh, he cannot solder, or at least he hasn't really tried on systems or anything like that. Now he had a band. 360 slim i want to say and what happened was he ended up selling not selling it but he sent it off to get service so it can get uh, rgh and when it came back he had this nice shiny rgh system he was all happy uh guess what he did i don't know <laughs> i'm scared to ask within 10 minutes he ended up bricking it because what happened was he so he had already paid the shipping and handling and all the servicing and all that stuff and he got it back uh, he took the disc that this guy gave him, and for whatever reason, I think there was some that wasn't working, so he decided to update his dashboard, and this guy forgot to give him the UPD flash file, but he saw a nandump.bin file, so he renamed that to UPD flash, put it on a flash drive, opened up Zell, and flashed over his original stock dump back to his system. No! <laughs> Oh my god, dude! Yeah, he had. That's he had. The, I don't. I still don't even know why he did it, but he now he's he's much more proficient with that. So that's something that now we can sit here and laugh about, and he's going to cringe about it. I don't want to say his name. He can out himself if he no, wants to. Yeah. He listens. But essentially, what I'm trying to say here is, uh, he learned from his mistake on that, and I remember he freaked out about it. And his dad was cool. He's like, "Yeah, you made a mistake, and it's going to cost me money to send it back, but." whatever we'll do it but still i mean that's something that i don't know how it happened but it did happen and also having the know-how and the program and everything could have helped to have that on hand and he could have just you know restarted everything back in because all the hardware was there but you know he had sent this stuff out it all got done and then within a matter of a few minutes he just renamed a file and you know (laughs) screwed everything up that's awful dude it is fucking (laughs) awful god well, at least it makes me feel good when I hear stories like that because I'm like, at least I'm not alone, you know? Mm-hmm. True that. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways, I, I think this is a good stopping point. What do you think? Yeah, if you're cool with it, I'm cool with it, man. Uh, if, if, if Are we finished or are we done? Are we finished or are we done? Are we finished or are we done? We're finished? <laughs> I say, I say, I say, because we, we talked about doing... Um, you know steps for troubleshooting let's make that next episode oh okay that works out pretty well so next episode troubleshooting if everyone's okay with that yeah i've got i've definitely got a lot of fun stuff yeah um, by the way that that was a birdman reference what oh my god i'm gonna okay after this podcast i'm gonna have to link you the video where birdman just flipped out on the breakfast club Oh, oh, I heard about him, like, suing them or something like that. I, I don't think he was suing them, but he came out on there and he cussed. And, like, right before he left, he's like, okay, are you finished or are you done? <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> okay, yeah, please do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for listening, watching. And uh, if you all are listening either on iTunes, Podbean, or now, now we are on Google Play Music. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited about that because I'm like, yes, now I can actually have my podcast on my phone. Badass. I actually watched one of them uh, or listened to one of them on uh, iTunes the other day while I was running on the treadmill. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, did you feel like awesome. a, did you feel like a little bit of a narcissist listening to yourself? Um, I'd rather not get into it. Okay. <laughs> okay. But anyways, we ha- now have several other venues. So I think the only venue we haven't crossed yet is Windows Phone, which if you have a Windows Phone, I'm really sorry. It's not yeah, that bad. Of, it's not that bad of an operating system. It's just, it just has really, really, really poor support. <laughs> Yeah, if you have a Windows phone, then, uh, you know, it's almost, no, it's not almost Christmas. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, sorry, you thought, it's like, well, uh, in just seven more months, you will be able to get a new, I don't know. Just man. just look optimistically at everything. Yeah, you know, check it out, check us out on YouTube or something, I don't know. Exactly, but yeah, no, our main comment section is on YouTube, where you can find myself with the video on here, where my YouTube channel is Mr. Mario 2011 and you can also check out Dope Swanner at uh, YouTube Dope Swanner. and Daniel, do you have uh, anything you want to plug? Uh, we love you. <laughs> yeah, no, but thank you guys so much for watching, as always. Um, thank you again, Mr. Mario. He is the man that keeps this together, and I feel like deserves credit every episode because, again, if it weren't for him, <laughs> this would not happen. I know this is like our podcast, but Mr. Mario single-handedly like makes sure like hey daniel like it's me mr mario you forget about me like we gotta record bro and i'm like oh yeah hey mr mario it's you like <laughs> no but uh, he, he does a fantastic job so everyone give like a cyber hand hand uh well, hand job. <laughs> well, well, oh god no 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 i'm done i'm done <laughs> I, I, i'm gonna say like a cyber applause and i said hand and i was like well, any who's in dubs winner and i am done with my perverted bad jokes mr mario thank you as always Hey, no problem. It's just, it's all part of the plan. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. Kisses. Fucking hand jobs, man. (laughs) (laughs) When I said hand, like, I meant to say, like, round of applause, and I was thinking of, like, hands in my head, and then so I was like, hand, I was like, what the fuck am I going to say after hand? So the only thing I think of was job, (laughs) I could have said, like, give Mr. Mario your hand-me-downs, I guess, or something like that. Oh, God. I don't know about those either. They might be all maggot-infested and nasty and shit.